Welcome to the Plant Diversity Lab. Fossil records indicate that plants first appeared about 400 million years ago. Their ancestors made the transition from an aquatic environment to a terrestrial one. As you may recall from Module 1, the closest living relative of land plants are caryophytes, which are green algae. In order for plants to transition from the aquatic to the terrestrial habitats, several adaptations evolved. Cuticle, which is a waxy layer that prevents desiccation. This means drying out. Pores, the need for the diffusion of carbon dioxide into the leaf from the surrounding air and diffusion of oxygen out of the leaf takes place through small pores in leaves and sometimes in stems. These gases cannot diffuse through the waxy cuticle. Stomata, the pores, are surrounded by two cells, which we call guard cells, regulate the opening and closing. These structures, stomata and guard cells, will be taken up later under plant structure. Next, a vascular system. The vascular tissue works to transport water and minerals from the roots up into the shoots and also transporting of sugars produced in the shoots down to the roots. Seeds. Seeds are protective structures for the developing embryo. As shown in this diagram, caryophytes are the closest living relatives of land plants. Approximately 475 million years ago, stomata and cuticle evolved giving rise to non-vascular plants. Vascular plants occurred some 425 million years ago. Vascular plants with seeds that protected the embryos evolved around 360 million years ago. The first being the gymnosperms, then later the angiosperms, the flowering plants, which are the most successful land plants. Shown here is a phylogenetic tree which depicts the origins of land plants from the ancestral green algae. We categorize land plants into non-vascular, the bryophytes, and the vascular, the tracheophytes. Examples of bryophytes are liver, liverworts, hornworts, and mosses, and tracheophytes are categorized into the seedless, non-vascular plants, lycophytes and pteraphytes, and then the seed vascular plants are broken down into the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. Before we begin our discussion on the life cycles of these plant groups, let's first take a look at how plants alternate between two separate bodies, one being haploid, the other diploid. We will discuss alternation of generations. Remember, only diploid cells can undergo meiosis. Meiosis occurs only once in the life cycle. Spores are produced by meiosis. Gametes are produced by mitosis, haploid cells dividing here. Fertilization is necessary to restore diploidy. Alternation of generations involves a haploid generation known as the gametophyte. The gametophyte produces haploid gametes by way of mitosis. The haploid gametes fuse, fertilization, and form the diploid zygote, which grows into the diploid generation, the sporophyte. The sporophyte produces haploid spores via the process of meiosis. These haploid spores reproduce by way of mitosis and grow into the next gametophyte generation. So here we have alternated between the haploid gametophyte and the diploid sporophyte generations. Bryophytes were the first land plants to evolve. So we take a look now at the non-vascular plants. Seedless non-vascular plants. Examples of these would be mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. These lack vascular tissue. They require water for necessary reproduction, therefore sperm must have a thin film of water 
to be able to be transported to the egg for the fertilization process. These plants reproduce by spores, so they do not produce seeds. And in the seedless nonvascular plants, my bryophytes, the gametophyte is the predominant stage. Let's take a look at alternation of generations within a moss. The life cycle of a moss alternates between a dominant haploid gametophyte stage, the male antheridium, and the female archegonium. Sperm and egg, the gametes, are produced in this stage. Fertilization takes place within the female gametophyte, the archegonium, and the diploid sporophyte develops. In the mature sporophyte, meiosis takes place and the haploid spores are produced, then released to begin another generation. Here we see examples of bryophytes, mosses, where you can see the green tissue here is the gametophyte and the brownish stalk is the sporophyte. Here we see liverworts. This is the gametophyte stage, the dominant stage. And hornworts. The tracheophytes. These plants have vascular tissue made up of phloem and xylem. We begin our discussion of the tracheophytes with the seedless vascular plants. Examples are club mosses, horsetails, and ferns. Again, these plants have xylem and phloem vascular tissue, cuticle to prevent desiccation, and like the bryophytes, reproduce by means of spores. Now the spores are more protected from drying out than those of the bryophytes. The life cycle of a fern alternates between a haploid gametophyte stage, the male antheridium, and the female archegonium are both located on the same structure known as a prothallus. Sperm and egg, the gametes, are produced in this stage. Fertilization takes place within the female gametophyte, the archegonium, and the diploid sporophyte develops, which is independent of the gametophyte, unlike that seen in the mosses. On the mature sporophyte, clusters of sporangia develop. The cells undergo meiosis and produce the haploid spores. These are then released to begin the next generation. Seedless vascular plant examples here include club mosses, horsetails, here is a cinnamon fern, and whisk fern. And lastly here we see Salaginella. Our tracheophyte discussion continues with the vascular seed plants, beginning with gymnosperms. Examples of gymnosperms include cycads, ginkgo, and conifers. These would be trees known Examples like pine trees and firs. These would be my cone-bearing plants. Gymnosperms produce specialized structures within the sporophyte which contain all the reproductive stages. This structure again in conifers is known as a cone. Gymno actually means naked seed, so the seeds are not very well protected. A huge evolutionary advantage in the seed plants though is the production of pollen grains which develops within male cones. Pollen grains are the tiny male gametophytes which house the haploid sperm cells. Now sperm cells no longer are dependent on water for having to swim to reach the egg in order for fertilization to take place. The life cycle of a gymnosperm is represented here with a pine tree. The life cycle alternates between a haploid gametophyte stage, the male gametophyte is the pollen grain, and the female gametophyte is within the ovule. Pollen grains are released from the male cone 
and are moved by wind currents to the female gametophyte, the embryo sac within the ovule. Op pollination has taken place. The sperm that were housed in the pollen fertilizes the egg and produces the diploid zygote, which develops into the embryo. The developing embryo, which is the sporophyte, is protected within the ovulate structures, which develop into the seed. Here are some examples of gymnosperms. Pine trees. And here are some examples of male pine cones there on the left. Male pine cones would produce the pollen. And then the female pine cones houses the egg, which after fertilization develops into the seed. Here are firs. Again, think Christmas tree like trees. These would be examples of gymnosperms. And here is ginkgo and cycads. And here we see a very ancient gymnosperm, Wellwichia. And the example here is showing the male cones, which is producing the pollen. Now we move on to the most highly successful land plants, the angiosperms. These are the flowering plants, lilies and grasses and roses being examples. The flower houses the entire alternation of generations. The anther is the male sporophyte where spores develop into pollen grains, the male gametophyte. Within the pollen, meiosis takes place to produce the sperm cells. The ovary is the female sporophyte, where spores develop into the embryo sac, the female gametophyte. Within the embryo sac, meiosis takes place to produce haploid cells, egg and two central cells. The event known as double fertilization takes place only in angiosperms. A diploid zygote and triploid endosperm is produced. The life cycle of an angiosperm, here the flower. In the angiosperm, the sporophyte generation is the only form that is clearly visible to someone observing a plant. The gametophyte generations are found within the flower itself. The pollen grain is a haploid microspore that develops within the anther of the stamen. Pollination involves the transferring of the pollen by wind or insects or birds to the female reproductive structures. Within the ovule is the female gametophyte, the embryo sac, which houses the haploid megaspore. Double fertilization involves the fusion of nuclei from one haploid sperm and one haploid egg to form the zygote, the young sporophyte. The second fertilization takes place when a second haploid sperm fuses with a central cell that contains two haploid nuclei. The result is a triploid cell that will continue to develop into endosperm, which may become a food resource in the seed for the developing seedling after germination. Here are some examples of angiosperms. Here a lily. Grasses are, endosperm, are, are angiosperms, where in the seeds you have some of the endosperm being developed. Oak trees are also examples of angiosperms. Here acorns are actually the fruits which protect the seeds. And then the lotus flower. Those you will see like um, in water gardens and in lily pads. 